Uh, what's up everyone? I'm going to show you a really quick way of adding plugins to FL Studio 12. It works exactly the same as FL Studio 11, but with more features. So, all you want to do, because everyone's been trying to figure out how all this works, but you don't need that. Alright, ready? Options, file settings, make, make sure this is ticked, and then hit refresh plugin. This opens up the FL Studio plugin scanner. It's an external program. From here, I believe these are default. These are all default. Just make sure verify plugins is ticked and hit start scan. Now, for me, that was very fast because this has all been scanned before, but um, it's verifying plugins. So, for you guys, if you're doing it for the first time, it'll probably take a lot longer. But, um, alright, now that's it. That's all you need. This F right here, this F is for favoriting plugins. Exactly the same method as FL Studio 11. For example, say I want Bitcrusher, it's an effect plugin. Say I want it on my list. Bang, tick. Head back to FL. There it is. Now that wasn't there before. I'll uh, show you that by on. And it's gone. This works for every single plugin. Uh, same for generators. Say I want crystal. Crystal in my generator. Bang, it's there. No problems at all. Um, that's about it for adding plugins very simply. If you want, if you want to know how the plugin database works out, I'm going to go through that now, but uh, I just wanted to get that out quickly to show you guys that it's really simple, much simpler than people expected. So, back to the plugin scanner. This plugin scanner, it tells you a lot of things. First of all, it tells you which plugins had errors while scanning. Like I know for a fact that Alchemy had an installation error. I didn't install it correctly, so that's my fault. Um, Alright, so the plugin scanner, it shows you the file path where the DLL is. It shows you the status, whether it's OK or whether it's an error. It shows you the format, whether it's an FL plugin, a VST plugin, that's that's VST2, or a VST3 plugin. Uh, it shows you whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit. I've got a lot of 32-bit plugins as a holdover from FL11, but now I'm running a 64-bit system and 64-bit FL Studio 12, so I intend to replace all those sometime in the future. It Plugin database tells you, sorry, plugin scanner tells you whether it's a synth or an effect, and it tells you how many inputs and outputs the plugin has. So, like I said, it's very simple. You just tick what you want, untick what you don't want. Now, sorting out the plugin database. Bitcrusher is here, but let's say I want that inside a category. So, I'll just add Bitcrusher. Um, hit Add to Plugin Database, and it'll tell me to open a subcategory folder that describes this plugin best. Now, Bitcrusher is a distortion plugin, but I don't have a distortion folder. So I'm going to right click Effects, open it, and it opens inside Windows Explorer. I'll go ahead and And that gets added to the plugin database inside FL. Now I'll open the distortion folder and add to plugin database again. It tells me Bitcrusher will be added to the distortion subcategory. I'm going to hit OK. And there, Bitcrusher now shows up in its own little distortion subcategory. Very simple. Um, not difficult at all. If I want to remove that later, I just right click. Delete file. Hit OK. And it's gone. Now, you'll notice Bitcrusher stays here. That's because it's still ticked from inside the plugin scanner. This main list, everything you need to access from this main list can be done through the plugin scanner. For categories, you use the plugin database. Now, the same thing goes for any plugins I don't want. For example, Fruity Big Clock. I have absolutely no use for this. So I just right click. Delete file, and it's gone from there. 
right there if I want to re-add it for example I don't know I might need it later on all you want to do is head to this installed folder now the installed folder is separate to the effects and generators folder because the effects and generators folder include everything in these lists they come up as the actual plugin database inside FL but the installed folder is just a list of every single plugin you have installed whether or not it's in these lists so I know for a fact that Big Clock is an effect, so I'll head to Effects, Fruity. There's Big Clock. I just hit Add to Plugin Database. If I want to categorize Big Clock, same deal. I open Big Clock. Add to Plugin Database tells me to um, choose a subcategory. So I can create a folder or I can add it to an existing folder. Exactly the same way I did with Bitcrusher just before. Um, I think that about covers everything. It's very simple, much, much, much simpler than people thought, and it runs pretty much identically for FL to FL Studio 11 if you just want stuff in the main list. If you want to categorize stuff, you've now got this option of the plugin database. So it's more of a feature than a change because they've added this plugin database while still keeping the favoriting option. So I think that covers everything. I will see you all next time. Thank you.